If you search golf online today, the first thing that will pop up is... Live golf. Live golf. Live golf. The new breakaway league that has been coined as the Saudi Golf League by some and is all everyone has been talking about for the last few weeks. And now, its first event is here. Featuring some star players like Phil Mickelson, Dustin Johnson and Andy Ogletree. The lineup for the first event at Centurion isn't exactly eye-watering, but Liv have said there's a lot of surprises up their sleeves on what could be a very entertaining week. So, let's go see what all this fuss is about. Right, so I've just got here to the car park by St Albans. It doesn't look like there's that many people here. <laughs> but uh, we're just going to do a quick park and ride, then I'll show you what it's like actually in the Centurion. I'm a bit early, it is only about, I think it's 11.30, and it tee off is about two, but there's a lot of surprises in store for today. So, um, let's have a look. Entry to Centurion was swift and easy, and as soon as you are in, there was an instant access to the players with the first tee, the putting green, and the driving range seconds away. The branding was literally everywhere, with Live Golf and Don't Blink plastered across everything that you can imagine it could be plastered across. The vibes here were actually pretty good. Music was blaring, really refreshing. The players were a lot more relaxed and talkative towards the crowd. Overall, so far, it was quite a modern refresh to other tour events. I thought I'd check out the fan zone as this was getting a lot of decent reviews from others. There was an array of stands with a Covent Garden style to the food zones on display. From burgers to hot dogs, there was an acceptable level of food variation here at this event, similar to other types of events you go to. Right, so um, I'm here at the first Live Golf event in Centurion. Um, it's actually pretty decent. There's a lot of things at the fan zone. I think what they've done here is they've really made sure that the fan zone, despite what golf is on play, um, is as enjoyable as possible for the passionate golfers and also people who have never played golf before. So we've got a 200 putt challenge, we've got some coaching and we've got a lot more. It seems a lot more relaxed than other events I've been to. It seems like it's a program day here, despite it being the first day of this tournament, which I think is the vibe you're gonna get for a lot of these tournaments. You're gonna to get it feeling like a lot more relaxed. The players are gonna be a little bit more open for you. The accessibility towards these players is a lot easier, despite it still being, as you can see, quite busy. The fan zone felt more like a festival, which was a great addition. You can tell from here that it's been planned really well. At this point, it almost felt like the professional golf was second in priority. Everything else seemed a little bit more fun. But with 2pm approaching, I headed out onto the course. I perched up onto the second tee to watch Taylor Gooch, Sergio Garcia and Pablo Larrasabo tee off. After a barely visible air show through the Centurion trees, they were off. But not long after they teed off, news began rolling in. Right, so it's 2.45 here at Centurion and the PGA Tour have just announced that all players who have PGA Tour membership who are participating here at Centurion have been suspended indefinitely. And Liv have also released a statement saying that it's troubling and they will investigate it further. So I feel like things are about to get ugly. It's a nice day though. <laughs> no players were informed of this news. And as much as I would have loved to shout to all of them saying what was going on, I decided it was best not to. Play was now well underway with the likes of Phil, DJ and others plonking their way around Centurion. And I'll tell you what, it was really boring. It could have been just me, but the first day of a tournament, the first day of a brand new series, should be drama filled. It should have a competitive edge and you should really want to watch shot to shot. This really wasn't the case with Live Golf. Honestly, this just felt more like an exhibition day rather than the first day of a, let's say, historical tournament. A lot of the star players have received a fat paycheck to be at the Live Golf series, so it almost makes the tournament feel like a bit of a byproduct. Now, I know there is a lot of prize money at stake, but when you're thinking of the 400 million that has been offered towards DJ, Bryson, and Phil Mickelson, it's not as much as that. And that kind of makes you think, do they really care that much? Does anyone care? It was certainly a weird vibe, but still, Live Golf definitely did do some things right. I've got to say, from first impressions for a well, for their first tournament here at Live Golf, I wasn't expecting too much, but the, the production value is actually a lot better than I thought. For people who have watched, you would have seen the leaderboard, the little custom leaderboard that they have, is a, a lot better than other tours, to be honest. It's still a bit confusing. I think they've still got a lot of work to do for certain things, such as the team, team style, which is a bit confusing, things like that. Also, there's barely any scoreboards here. Like they need to have a little, a lot more interactive scoreboards because I'm walking around now and there's like there's a few every like five or six holes, but there's not enough. So I think I can just see one here on 16, but there needs to be one every single hole. Those people are clueless. But people are asking me for the score and I don't really know. It's not really on Liv's website either. I do have to give props to them though because the production value and just the overall effort they've put in has exceeded what I expected here. And 
what you can tell is as much as people don't like it live golf is is going to be here to stay it's not going to be gone in a week a month a year this is going to be something that's going to be here for a very long time i ventured around 16 to 18 for my final few hours and it was a really great finish although i'm not sure if it will be the finish because of the shotgun start for its first event Live Golf certainly did very well in producing a day out that is very enjoyable, but perhaps not for the professional golf itself. They have a lot of things to work on, but I'm sure they're aware on this and they're probably pretty happy as to how it's panned out so far. You cannot ignore that the Saudi government is funding the Live Golf series and they are flagrantly attempting to sports wash us by to supply hundreds of millions of dollars towards the likes of Bryson DeChambeau, Phil Mickelson and Dustin Johnson. More players will join them, so this tour is not going away. The aim with Live Golf Series isn't to make money. And trust me, the Saudis have a lot of money, so it's not gonna go away anytime soon. There are many, many problems with Live Golf. My current problem here is that because they are just shoving hundreds of millions of dollars in professional golfers' faces, it makes the tournament golf itself just seem a little bit rubbish. I know Greg's trying his hardest, bless him, to make it a little bit more interesting with the funky little team events and things like that. And in all honesty, from a long-term point of view, I think it will work. It will become more interesting. And it, the coverage itself, apart from the commentators being a bit odd, has been quite a modern refresh. And there's a lot of things they have done right. But from a golf perspective, they have a lot of work to do to make it an actual interesting tournament over a long-term adventure. No one wants to pay 67 quid or so to see what the players had to offer at the first day. A lot of people don't want Live Golf to continue and will think it will just go bust after a few months. It's here to stay. It will be here next year and the year after that. And one thing I imagine as well is some of the teething problems that I've mentioned in this video, tournament to tournament, they're going to improve them. What do you guys think of all this? In my 10 to 15 years of covering golf, I've never seen golf in such a mental place that it is right now. It might be enjoyable for some, but there's so much controversy surrounding the Live Golf PGA Tour, what's going to happen to the majors. It's a lot to take in. If you guys have enjoyed this video today, just covering the first day at the Live Golf Invitational, let me know. And if you want me to cover any more of it, let me know down in the comments. If you are new to Golf Magic, guys, smash that subscribe button down below as well. It really helps us out. We've got a lot of really fun videos coming very soon. I'll see you guys at the next video.